Don't forget, you can reach the latest episode of Potomac Watch anytime. Just ask your smart speaker, play the opinion Potomac Watch podcast. That is, play the opinion Potomac Watch podcast. From the opinion pages of the Wall Street Journal, this is Potomac Watch. Welcome back. I'm Paul Jugo with Kim Strassel and Kyle Peterson here on Potomac Watch. And uh, an historic weekend in politics threw a uh, big curveball at the Republicans who had been planning to run against Joe Biden, hoping to run against Joe Biden, and running, as you saw at the convention in Milwaukee last week, running a frontal assault on his uh, record as president. But suddenly, no Joe Biden. It's Kamala Harris, the vice president, who's almost certainly going to be the Democratic nominee. So how are the Republicans responding? We got a hint of that with the ad you heard hitting Harris on immigration. You're going to have uh, – they've been planning this for at least the contingency of Harris replacing Biden for some time. So you're going to see some attacks going on. But it's interesting. Trump came out Sunday with a truth social post that was just another assault on Biden. Didn't strike me as a very wise political move, and it made him look very Trumpy in the worst sense of the term, rather than at all the unifying candidate that his campaign advisors would like him to be. But let's all listen to the vice presidential nominee, J.D. Vance, talk about the fact that he thinks Biden should resign right now. If Joe Biden can't run for president, he can't serve as president. And if they want to take him down because he's mentally incapable of serving, Invoke the 25th Amendment. You don't get to sort of do this in the most politically beneficial way for Democrats. If it's an actual problem, they should take care of it the appropriate way. Speaker Mike Johnson has also taken up this point, as have other Republicans. Kyle, what's your view of it? I think it's an unconvincing argument for a couple of reasons. One is that we're talking about different terms here. Joe Biden's term of office expires in about six months. And the idea that he cannot serve until January of 2029, when he would be 86 years old, is different from the idea that he cannot serve until January of 2025, which is coming up pretty quickly, especially given the fact that he is now going to be off the campaign trail, not fundraising. There's been some reporting after the debate that what Biden thought he needed was more sleep and less work. Dropping out of the campaign is certainly a way to get more sleep and less work. And number two, I think those Republicans are underrating the difficulties of the alternative path that they are proposing. If President Biden resigned, you would end up with President Kamala Harris immediately, and she would be simultaneously trying to do the job and learn the job of being commander in chief while running her first presidential campaign herself with only about 100 days to make her case to voters. And so to the extent that we're worried about adversaries taking advantage of chaos in the White House, putting Kamala Harris uh, behind the Resolute desk, you know, at five o'clock tonight seems like it is a bigger vulnerability than keeping Joe Biden and his advisors who've been at it this for three and a half years doing the job for another few months. Just on a sheer political calculus, Kim, why in the world would Republicans want to put uh, Harris in the big chair to be president and to run as president as opposed to somebody trying to be president? It doesn't seem to make much sense. And I very much agree with Kyle on the implications for the risk of adversaries trying to take advantage of this uproar in American politics. And no question there's some vulnerabilities here with a lame duck president. But on the other hand, he and the sort of commander in chief by committee, as I called it, that's been running American foreign policy for much of this administration, at least been doing it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, if suddenly you, you thrust Kamala Harris into that role, she's got to learn that got to talk to foreign leaders. She's got to deal with uh, all of the complexities of the national security uh, uh, apparatus, as well as running for president. That's more, much more complicated than just letting Joe finish out the job. Yeah. I mean, what they should be doing, Paul, is talking themselves, looking presidential about the risks of turmoil and welcoming her to the race and running on their own ideas. I think what they see is a brutal political calculation here, as they have seen in the past couple of weeks, the benefit of the chaos engulfing the Democratic Party. And they'd like to see that chaos continue, which they think would happen if she simultaneously had to take over that commander in chief role. I do agree with you that that actually chaos is very dangerous for the United States. And so this is not their best approach. 
But I think what they're going to need to do is embrace the fact that Kamala Harris is a candidate. And that goes as well to you now hearing some Republicans saying that they're going to get all in behind legal challenges to try to make it more difficult to swap out Joe Biden's name for Kamala Harris's name on ballots in certain states. I appreciate the law and order argument, but again, they should be making the case to Americans on the, the straight up comparison between their ideas, their agenda, their candidate, and what is now clearly looking or barreling toward the Democratic candidates. I agree with that, Kim. But let's uh, step back and just give your quick summary of what you think the overall impact is of the Harris switchover uh, and whether this is a race or not. I will give my view first. I think Harris has a chance to make this close. She's going to increase Democratic enthusiasm and turnout and at a minimum reduce losses in Congress. The question in my mind is how will she perform on the campaign trail better than she did in 2019. But Donald Trump has a ceiling, and I think she could make this a race and maybe even win. What about you, Kyle? I agree with that. I think that he withdrew because he was looking at polling showing, for example, him down by seven in Michigan. And that kind of polling suggests to me not that these purple states are trending sweeping Republican in a real way, but that there were a lot of people who had serious concerns about Biden's age and infirmity and could not in good conscience pull the Democratic lever for him. And Kamala Harris takes that advantage away. I do wonder whether President Trump picked J.D. Vance uh, looking for a, a blowout in these kinds of states and is now looking at more of a nail biter race. Kim, how about you? I think what she does instantly is potentially narrow the map a little bit more, which is what Democrats were beginning to get very anxious about. So if you look at some of these states that traditionally have not been in the Republican realm of gettable, maybe you see the polls looking a lot better for Democrats in places like Virginia, for instance, New Hampshire, states that suddenly were going on the map because Joe Biden's decline had been so precipitous in the polls. I think a lot of how she fares may actually also come down to her running mate. And that's going to be a big decision here. If she chooses a, a straight up progressive, much like her own, at least her own record, it could be a little bit harder for her to pivot or present that fresh start we were talking about before. And I'm talking here about, you know, a, a Whitmer, a J.B. Pritzker. Word is, is that she had calls over the weekends with some of these red state governors or swing state governors, Andy Bashir in Kentucky, uh, Josh Shapiro in Pennsylvania, Roy Cooper in North Carolina. I think that would be a wise decision, provide a little bit of balance on the ticket, also a little bit more, maybe in some of those cases, more youth. That's going to be a, I think will play big in this particular situation, given the upheaval. I think she's going to pick a white male from a swing state myself. Um, but Kim, uh, briefly, can she make this a competitive race and even win? Yeah, absolutely. And Republicans would be very dumb to think they've got this in the bag. I agree with that. We'll see how she fares in particular as a California Democrat in Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin. That's what the race may come down to. All right. Thanks, Kim. Thanks, Kyle. Thank you all for listening. Uh, it was a historic weekend in American politics, and we'll see how this plays out every day here on Potomac Watch. Thanks for listening.